Hi folks, I'm Mike from M&M Kayaks up in Pine Top, Arizona. One of my goals when I started this business was to educate new fishermen on the basics of trout fishing. The trout that we're going to cover today are basically what we see up here a lot. The Apache trout, brook trout, brown trout, cutthroat, and rainbow. Very easy to identify these trout by their markings and most of the game and fish books, whether it's uh, on the for National Forest or for the White Mountain Apache Reservation has pictures of the fish inside the books. You should be aware of what you're catching. The Apache trout is on the threatened species list for Arizona. It is also the Arizona state fish. All of these trout basically, except for the Gila trout, which I'm not really going to cover, are cold water fish. So even down here at 7,000 feet in the summertime, they can still live in the water, but they're going to be very lethargic and they're going to be down on the bottom looking for colder water. If you head up to the reservation where you're at 9,000 feet, the water temperature will be 10 to 15 degrees cooler on average, and you're gonna have much better su success during the summertime temperatures. The Apache trout uh, basically will eat just about anything from small fish to flies that you throw, artificial or otherwise, and almost pretty much any of these trout lures, but they are a rarity, so you're not gonna see a lot of them. Uh, brook trout are also, they're not native to Arizona. Uh, they were introduced to, the, to Arizona in 1903, uh, and they are a fall spawner. So like the brown trout, they're going to be active coming up at about mid-October, uh, going into November, depending on Mother Nature and how long the spawn season lasts, but they're a lot of fun to catch. They don't get huge, but they put up a very good fight. The brown trout, on the other hand, we're getting ready to go into spawn season for them as well, mid-October, and they are a voracious eater. So you can throw everything from artificial mice, which is a artificial fly, to Rapalas that look like small fish. We'll cover this more in depth, but they're, you're going to find them in areas where there's structure underneath the water or weed beds that they can hide in and they're opportunist, opportunistic hunters. So if they can dash out of the weeds and grab a small fish, they're going to do it. To include crawfish or crawdads. They like underhangs. They like to hang out in the dark places and basically they hide from other fish and attack them when they can. Cutthroats, uh, they were introduced into Arizona in 1900. It's a non-native species to Arizona. Uh, they're very distinctive in their coloring. And then the one that everybody knows is the rainbow trout. Rainbow trout, they are a spooky fish, but they're relatively easy to catch because it's the most commonly stocked fish up on the mountain. So when they go in the lake, they're not very smart. Uh, the difference between a natural or a spawned uh, rainbow trout is way different than something that comes out of the hatchery. So the hatchery trout are used to getting fed. They are used to seeing people. And one that spawns naturally is not going to be like that. And if they see you or your boat, they're going to take off. They are the easier fish to catch because they will eat salmon eggs, worms, artificial lures, flies, you name it. There's so many different ways to fish for trout. It's just, you can use a bobber, you can fish on the bottom, you can use fly rods, you can use spinning rods. It, there really is no right or wrong way to do it. What you do want to do is stick to some fishing uh, products such as these rods here that are going to be more geared towards what you're doing. These are both basically the same operation as far as the reel goes. Is these are both spinning reels. The big difference is in the rod. This rod here is essentially a fast action rod. You can fish lures and flies on it. Uh, you could do some bait fishing on this, but the real secret right here is where the rod begins to bend and how much flex the tip has. Unless you're trolling for trout, you're not going to get a monster hit. You're going to get just a little tap on your line and you need to be able to see that in your rod. So we recommend a fast action rod. It doesn't have to be 10 feet long or anything like that. A six foot to an eight foot rod is plenty. 
You can get great casting distance out of either one of these. You run six pound line if you think that you're going to catch a monster. And I would go no less than four pound line for trout up here because we do have big trout up here. The other type of rod, this is a medium action rod. So you would see somebody fishing for catfish, heavy bass. This is a single piece rod. Um, the tip still does have some flex, but this is a much heavier rod. So if you were trolling with something like cowbells, which is an attractor that you would tie a lure or fly on behind, this rod would have very little bend and you would still be able to feel the fish if you got a strike. If you were using a light action rod or a fast action rod, this rod's going to be bent over the entire time and you're probably not even going to know if you have a bite. So that's the big difference. Unfortunately, there is no one perfect rod unless you only do one style of fishing. So you may have to have more than one rod, which is not a bad thing. The next thing I would like to go over would be various types of fishing. All right, so I want to go over some basic lures with you and patterns. Patterns is what the lure is marked with. This is a Phoebe, and as you can see, they look drastically different. This is silver and blue. This one has a brown trout pattern on it. So either one of these will work. If you're looking to catch brown trout, run the brown trout, because like I said, they're voracious eaters and they eat their own. So these work great up here. Everything that I'm gonna show you is a tried and true classic up here. So that's a rooster tail. This is basic, a basic spinning lure. You can cast this from shore, you control it from a boat. They have all different colors, all different patterns. Um, it's going to be up to you to decide what you're gonna use that day. And my tackle box is full of these because sometimes a gold blade doesn't work, but it'll be the silver blade and et cetera, et cetera. We also have what's called a super duper. Again, this comes in various patterns. Here we have one that's made out of simple copper. And then we have one that's uh, painted to look like a frog. Both of these have just a basic, it's a twist pattern that, or twist action that goes through the water. Depending on the sunlight, it can be, this copper one might be the one that works that day. Uh, but then again, the frog is always pretty popular. Z-rays, Z-rays were off the market for a long time. So Clinton Lindsay bought this company, got them back on the shelves for us. Again, they have lots of different patterns. If you're fishing for brown trout, here's a brown trout pattern. We've got something that'll catch pretty much any trout up here, which is silver with red dots, all the way to some crazy pattern like that, which is more, I don't know what it represents, but they work. This is a newer lure up here on the mountain. Um, we've got two different weights. This is a quarter ounce, and this one is 7 16 ounce. Uh, we've got a rainbow pattern here. And this one is the bloody ripa. If you don't say it like that, you're not going to catch fish. What this, this lure does is you run your line down through the body of the lure. It's got these small wings on it. This little bead goes on next and then you tie on your treble hook and it floats through the water and gives a crazy pattern. Uh, we've gotten a lot of success out of these. Uh, I don't know if it's because the fish haven't seen them up here or if it's just really a good lure but we've got a big selection up here to include some brown trout patterns for this season. The other one, these are Rapalas. Some people have seen them, some people haven't. You would think that it's a bass lure. However, during brown trout and spawning season, because brown trout eat their own, you run a small pattern like this. This would be a rainbow or something silver fish and this would be more along the lines of a brown trout right here. These stay on the surface. When you pull them or start retrieving them, the little bill on the front of the lure pulls it underwater a little bit and it looks like a swimming fish underwater. So you would fish these near the weed banks and try and draw the big trout out. Anything, anywhere that there's structure underwater, which is big rock piles or down trees, limbs hanging underwater, something where fish can hide, 
that's where the big ones are going to be hanging out or looking for small prey like these. So very successful with these during the spawn season. There is hundreds of lure patterns out there. So you can literally fill your tackle box with nothing but lures, but you really only need a few simple patterns in various colors to be successful. So along with, with the lure lines that we have, we've got Panther Martins. This is a holographic edition. Uh, basically all of these are designed to transmit light off of the lure. So the reflection is brighter. Fish can see it from deeper water. Uh, this is again, this is just a spinning lure. Got it in various different colors right here. This one has ultraviolet reflection on it or not sure how to describe it, but it uses the ultraviolet light to transmit better uh, light for the fish to see. So very popular up here and they've been killing it with them. Now to go to bait fishing, what I want to do is basically I want to educate people on running a two bait rig or a two hook rig. So this is obviously not fishing line, but if I was using fishing line, you wouldn't be able to see it. So you would take a piece of leader. You can make it as long or as short as you want. I prefer something about this length or a little bit longer. This is the loop that's going to go on your swivel. This loop here, you would tie your first hook on. If you, if you get an eagle claw hook for bait fishing, they're all going to look about the same. They've already got a leader on them with a loop. All you have to do is pass the loop through, put the hook through the hook loop and pull it tight and you're done. So you would put one there and one there and then your split shots or bass caster weights down here. I, if you're fishing in a rocky area, I prefer to run split shots down here because if, you, if your weights do get snagged and you pull on it, you can get it loose without losing your entire bait rig. So we have a lot of crawfish up here, or crawdads. And when you're running baits, what I recommend is anything that does not float, put it on your top hook. Your floaters can go down here, it's closer to the bottom, but it's going to float the hook up and it'll keep it out of reaching distance of the crawfish. So this is a really simple, rig to tie it is literally just three hooks or correction three loops with two hooks and a place to put your weights down here so you can attach this very quickly with using a swivel on the end of your line and if you lose it all all you got to do is make up another one real quick off some leader as far as baits go we have every everything from all kinds of different flavors of power bait um, Garlic seems to be one of the ones that's working the best up here right now. And of course, it's one of the ones that we cannot get. So the entire country bought up all the garlic power bait. Night crawlers are one of the other really common baits to use up here. Uh, the ones that we use come from White Mountain Bait and Tackle. They are Canadian night crawlers. They're about that big. And you can get two to three hooks out of each one. So. A dozen worms goes a long way when you're buying night crawlers. The other common uh, bait up here is salmon eggs. Uh, they look good, but don't eat them. Uh, fish love them. So this has been, this brand Potsky has been around since I've been a kid. It is the most reliable salmon egg on the market, in my opinion, and they work the best for up here. Some of the other products that you might want to be interested in using, especially if you're going after catfish, uh, but this does work for trout as well, is we have the Sense now. Basically, it is nothing but bloody tuna fish ground up into a, a, an oil that you would apply to a worm or something that you're putting underwater. I don't recommend it on lures such as rooster tails that have feathers coming off of them that have feathers coming off the back because it will goop them up and you have to wash them off with soap and water after that and I don't want to do that. There's several different brands out there. Procure is one of the best ones and they really do work. Um, basically what happens is when you put your bait underwater with that stuff on it, it sends out a much bigger scent trail than any of the natural baits that you would get and you attract more fish that way. That is the goal.
Along with this double bait rig like this, you can have a couple of split shots on the bottom, attach it to your swivel, and then use a red and white bobber if you're going to fish the surface. This is really good for kids that don't have the attention span yet to watch the rod tip alone if you're fishing on the bottom. So literally this, you just push this button, your line goes through the little hook there, you bring your line up and hook it in the other hook up here and it's going to float there and your bait is going to sink. It'll be down below the bobber. When you get a bite, it's going to go up and down. It's a lot of fun for kids and it's easier for them to manage than watching just the tip of their rod, which gets pretty boring if you're not getting bites. So same exact setup. You still need a little bit of weight on the bottom. That would be Sitka, the shop dog. You still need a little bit of weight on the bottom to keep your bait down. And if you're going to float power bait or use that, this needs to be longer so that your power bait is down below the surface more and it's, it's still going to float up. So you don't want your bait floating on the surface. All right, folks, that's gonna wrap it up. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave comments or questions. Uh, please like us on Facebook. And if you want to come into the shop, I will be more than happy to help you out with any of the products that we just talked about. So just let me know. Thank you.